Hi everyone, we're talking about multiphonics again today. We're going to be talking about a special type of overtone multiphonics. Um, these type of multiphonics have the lower note in the throat register and the upper note in the altissimo. More specifically, the upper note is more likely than not going to be in the fourth register of the clarinet. Uh, now, one important thing to remember about register is that one note can belong to multiple register of the instrument depending on the fingering you use. Okay, um, so one example I'm gonna use here to demonstrate this is the F sharp. Okay, our standard fingering for altissimo F sharp is thumb register key, second finger, left hand, and sliver and E flat. Okay. One alternate register, uh, not alternate register. One alternate fingering that we have is just an overblown B flat, and then we have the long F sharp, which is one two, one two three. Oh, and E flat key. Okay, so these three fingerings all give us. F sharp, but um, two of them belong to a different register than the third fingering. So the first standard fingering is actually just an alternate version of overblown B flat. Okay, so the overblown B flat, if we just close the side key and open up the first tone hole and use this as both an alternate register key as well as a venting tone hole, it'll bring the pitch to an F sharp. Uh, so the first two fingerings are essentially the same uh, and what it is is just the third register of your Xiaoyimo E flat. Okay. So that fingering, the one we normally use, belongs to the third register it belongs to the third register of the clarinet. Now the long fingering, uh, what it actually is, is just the fourth register of the uh, Xiaoyumo A fingering. So this fingering is actually in the fourth register of the clarinet and slightly varied for pitch. Uh, so here it is, just playing the different registers of this fingering. Uh. So that fingering belongs to the fourth register of the clarinet. So it's important to distinct make this distinction in these type of multiphonics and knowing exactly where that fingering comes from or what it's derived from. Uh, th this is also another reason why uh, the E and the F sharp or E F F sharp is a little bit unstable in the altissimo and then we use long F sharp or long F when we want a more stable and controlled uh, sound or we, we want more sp stability in the, in the note we use the long fingerings because they actually belong to the seventh harmonic and not the fifth harmonic and for some reason that's just more stable on the clarinet uh, playing in the fourth register rather than the third register uh, so back to multiphonic the ones we're going to be talking about are lower note in the throat tone and the upper note usually in the fourth register. Once in a while you'll see one that's in the fifth register or very rarely the third register. Uh, so yeah, these are a special type of overtone multiphonics. You can use the standard uh, method of producing overtone multiphonics to get them. Um, but Personally, I have kind of found a special way of uh, producing these multiphonics and it's very stable. Uh, so I gave it its own category when I did my research. They're labeled uh, with the category D uh, in my fingering chart. So how I produce these multiphonics is just by uh, raising the root of my tongue. Now that sounds really weird. Um, 
how how do we even raise the root of our tongue it's not something we commonly talk about or even think about uh so the easiest way um i have been able to come up with to explain this is just to say the consonants uh g like you're saying the word golf or go if you say it slowly um there is the the consonant right before you make the g sound the mm. like so like golf that silence right before the g golf go you can see my adam's apple moving up that is the same type of motion that we that i use to create these these multiphonics um and when we're playing the clarinet it feels like we're just really tensing up our throat uh it, which is kind of something we try to avoid in regular playing we try to have a relaxed throat but in this case it feels like at least it feels like this i don't know if it's actually true um it feels like i'm tensing up my throat a lot and i'm kind of you it, it, with guys you can see their atoms apple moving up so even if when i'm just saying the consonant g um like the word golf or go you can kind of see my atoms apple moving up a little bit um it's also very similar to the first half of a swallowing motion so if you're just trying to swallow saliva like normal you can see how, how my atoms apple move moved all the way up it doesn't go quite as far because uh when, when we play well it could because what essentially is happening is we're sealing off the airway when we're swallowing so it's a similar motion just not that extreme um it's kind of hard to do when i'm just telling you this uh so kind of try it for yourself see if you can figure this out um but yeah once you're able to get this motion the multiphonics are actually extremely stable and they're very very easy well most of them are very easy to get once you know what this motion is and um with some of them it's even so stable that i can circular breathe on it um one example is eric mandat's jungle it, that he uses this on the second last page there's a couple there's a couple multiphonic fingerings i think four in total because it's two sets of alternating fingerings yeah so four multiphonic fingerings that are like this uh on i believe the second last page or the third last page of the jungle and it it, it first he goes through a series of alternating multiphonic fingerings and it goes on and on and on for a little bit and you kind of run out of breath at the end but luckily there's two sets of these type of multiphonics at the very end of it so you can actually circular breathe it uh that's where i kind of discovered that i could do this is when i was playing the jungle and i was like oh hey these multiphonics are so stable i can actually circular breathe but yeah so um that's more or less it for this multiphonic so i'm um, just going to give you a short demonstration i'm going to use the fingering it's basically long f sharp plus the a key uh this is going to be kind of an f quarter sharp and then a quarter sharp b three quarter flat whatever you like to call it <laughs> So those two notes. I don't know if you can see uh or how well you can see from the video, but um pay attention to my neck, especially if you can see it, the Adam's apple. You you can kind of see it tensing up and when i'm playing the multiphonic and when i'm just holding a single note it kind of relaxes and the atom map will drop a little bit so here it is again so hopefully you can see that and like i said it's kind of quite quite easy once you know how to do it and it's quite stable and i'm i was able to circular breathe while holding that multiphonic so yeah that's it for this type of multiphonic it's just a special case of the overtone multiphonics 
kind of a hard concept to explain and kind of hard when you don't know what you're doing to kind of imitate this type of motion. But once you figure it out, it's very easy, very stable. The multiphonics are very flexible and you can hold them forever. So yeah, that's, that's more or less it for this type of multiphonics. And with that, we kind of come to the end of the multiphonics series on clarinet. Um, but I do have a couple of bonus things that I have planned. So look out for those in the near future. Um, very short video today. I uh, hope you enjoy the ride. You've enjoyed the ride on this multiphonic journey with me. Uh, hopefully nothing is too confusing. Uh, feel free to contact me about anything you have, any questions you have, any comments, um, anything you found in particular that's interesting. I had a couple of people reach out to me already. Uh, thank you to those that have. Um, yeah, it was kind of cool to hear your feedback and look out for a couple of bonus video in the near future. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching all my videos and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the near future.